the life of Benjamin Franklin should be of importance to every American, primarily because of the part he played in securing the independence of the United States and establishing it as a nation. But who is Benjamin Franklin really? For instance, did you know Benjamin Franklin was an inventor, writer, entrepreneur, author, printer, scientist and much more? I would like to take you through the life of Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers of the United States and the true first American. Benjamin Franklin was born on the 17th of January 1705 in Boston. His father had seven children with his first wife and ten more with his second wife. Benjamin was his 15th child and youngest son. Benjamin learned to read at an early age and despite his success at the Boston Latin School, he stopped his formal schooling at 10 to work full time in his father's candle and soap shop. Benjamin hated it there and his father apprenticed Ben at 12 year olds to his brother James at a print shop. James mistreated Ben constantly and after a few years, Ben fled Boston and he escaped to Philadelphia. There he found a job with Samuel Keemer, a printer whom Franklin thought an old fish, but stayed on with him because he enjoyed their lengthy philosophical discussions. It was during this time that Franklin developed the debating skills that would prove so important later in his life. He always felt a strong urge towards writing and soon started to develop his writing skills in a very particular way to improve himself. He would read what he considered to be well-written articles and then, a day or two later, would try to recompose them as accurately as possible from memory. Then he would go back to the original article and compare his effort with the original. Just like Napoleon Hill started his mastermind group, Benjamin Franklin did pretty much the same in 1727 when he created a club called the Junto. Junto members were young tradesmen and professionals who met to discuss their current events. Much of Benjamin's ideas for community improvement came from this one group. For instance, he was the first to successfully organize a subscription-based American lending library. He facilitated the Philadelphia's fire department and an academy which later evolved into the University of Philadelphia. Franklin's greatest business accomplishment came from the publication of Poor Richard's Almanac. On December 19, 1732, Franklin published his first almanac under the alias of Richard Saunders. The almanac was published for the year of 1733 and was published once a year for the next 25 years. It contained all sorts of interesting information such as the calendar, weather forecasts, sayings, poems and demographics. It also included recipes, trivia, advice and proverbs about industry and frugality. Franklin considered it a vehicle of instruction for common people who could not afford books. A literature for the masses. Almanacs were the most read secular books in colonial America. Moving on to the next chapter in Benjamin Franklin's life, which was experimenting. He was also known for his famous lightning and electricity experiments. He discovered that there was a connection between those two and he conceived of an experiment in which a person would hold an iron rod on a hilltop to attract a lightning strike. With this experiment, he not only tried to prove that metal draws an electrical charge, but also that lightning was indeed electricity. Meanwhile, Franklin decided to perform the experiment himself, only a little bit different. It was around June 1752 that Benjamin Franklin conducted the famous kite experiment. Franklin stood outside under a shelter during a thunderstorm and held on to his silk kite with a key tied to it. The key was struck by lightning and he was able to transfer the charge from the key to a special jar that stored electricity called a Leiden jar. His experiments eventually led to the invention of the lightning rod. After success in scientific circles, Franklin turned his attention to the political arena. In 1757, Franklin traveled to London as a representative of the Pennsylvania Assembly, to which he was elected in 1751. Over several years, he worked to settle a tax dispute on other issues involving descendants of William Penn, the owner of the colony of Pennsylvania. After a brief period back in the US, Franklin lived primarily in London until 1775. While he was abroad, the British government began in the mid-1760s to impose a series of regulatory measures to assert greater control over its American colonies. In 1766, Franklin testified in the British Parliament against the Stamp Act of 1765, which required that all legal documents, newspapers, books, playing cards and other printed materials in the American colonies carry a tax stamp. Although the Stamp Act was repealed in 1766, 
additional regulatory measures followed, leading to ever-increasing anti-British sentiment and eventual armed uprising by the American colonists. Franklin returned to Philadelphia in May 1775, shortly after the Revolutionary War had begun and was selected to serve as a delegate to the Second Continental Congress, Americans' governing body at that time. In 1776, he was part of the five-member committee that helped draft the Declaration of Independence, in which the 13 American colonies declared their freedom from British rule. That same year, the Congress sent Franklin to France to enlist that nation's help with the Revolutionary War. In February 1778, the French signed a military alliance with America and went on to provide soldiers, supplies and money that proved critical to America's victory in the war. Before I give you my final words about the life of Benjamin Franklin, on behalf of me and my partner, I would like to wish every American that is watching a happy 4th of July. Have a happy and safe Independence Day. The life of Benjamin Franklin shows how one person, through his limitless curiosity and compassionate interest in human progress and liberty, can alter the course of history. Thank you for watching and as always, keep reading as much as you can.